Hello everybody. Thank God it's a Monday, April 19, 2021. May mga fake news na lumalabas ha, tungkol sa pagdating ng mga barkong pandigma ng Amerika, Australia at Japan sa Subic at Clark tungkol sa namumuong ten tensyon sa West Philippine Sea. Maganda po sana kung totoo yan dahil madedepensahan po natin ang ating bakuran. Kaso nga hindi. Ito po ang inyong lingkod, Benji Chudoro. Samahan niyo ako sa isa na namang edisyon ng The Stock Market Today. Ako po ay isang retired bank officer na nagsimula mag-invest sa Philippine Stock Market noong 2007. At ginagawa ko po itong report every day which I started last August of last year. I also report the latest news on your favorite and most active stocks. If you like the content, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And if you have stocks in mind that you want me reviewed, please comment on the comment box and I will prioritize. Ang balita natin today ay tungkol sa ating power supply and, and how it will affect Meralco and Aboitis power. And the results of trading sa ating Philippine Stock Exchange ngayong araw, April 19, 2021, dito lamang sa The Stock Market Today. Okay po, from the Business Mirror, plants on extended outage to limit Luzon power supply. A power shortage in Luzon looms mainly due to thin supply during the hot dry season until August, the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines or NGCP warned. Thin operating margin is forecasted in Luzon grid from April to August 2021 due to multiple power plants on extended outage, thereby providing limited power supply. Technical limitations brought about by the pandemic such as delay in delivery of materials or spare parts, temporary work stoppage, and travel restrictions were stated as some of the reasons for the plant's extended outages, said the NGCP. With this, the grid operator is asking the industry stakeholders to intervene to avert an impending power supply shortage. NGCP maintains an annual grid operating and maintenance program which schedules the preventive maintenance of power plants taking into consideration the needed supply vis-a-vis -vis projected demand. Now, may I share with you the news item or the, the commentary of uh, BDO Nomura on that news item. Ang sabi ni BDO Nomura, further tightening of the Luzon grid's power supply may provide downside risks to our estimates for Meralco's core distribution business. However, we believe that there is only a slim probability of this occurring as we expect that there will be adequate supply to meet demand. We maintain the potential spikes in spot prices may only be temporary and should normalize in tandem with the res resolution outages. We have a buy on MER and AP within the power sector considering the expected recovery in power demand this year given the recovering economy. Okay, so that was the commentary of BDO Nomura. Now let's now take a look at what happened to our Philippine Stock Exchange. It lost 35.05 points down 0.54% to 6459.76 on a Monday trading. Net foreign selling continues at uh, 704.45 million. On the market activity, 119 companies declined, 81 advanced while 47 remained unchanged. The all share index also lost 0.31%, while only the financials and the mining gained 
mining gained at 1.02%, while the financials was just was almost flat at 0.02% gain. The decliners was led by the holding companies at 0.60%, while the industrials, properties, and services also declined. As for the most active stocks, let us review the following. We will be reviewing ICT, MEG, ALI, BDO, SMPH, URC, BHI, BPI, GMA7, and APL. So let's now start with ICT. Wow, ICT continues to move up. At kung nakikita niyo po yung pattern dito, yung ating three moving averages, the exponential moving averages. Yung 20 day is the orange line. The 50 days is the blue line, while the 100 days, which is our long-term indicator, in, in the black line. So they are all under the candlesticks, which would indicate a bullish movement. So the ICT gained 0.86%, ending at 129 pesos, with the RSI at 59.88. It is bullish and continues to move upwards and it is already at the resistance level so the resistance is currently at 129 actually 129 to 129.40 your current resistance level yeah so if this breaks the resistance in the following days, then we may have a breakout. Actually, maganda nga ngayon dahil meron siyang volume. Although this is a short candlestick. So bullish si ICT today. And then, let's take a look at MEG. Naku, in contrast, MEG went down with the support level at uh, its near support already at 320. So actually, we would say that this is already the support level because when we talk of support and resistance, these are not actual points, but these are areas. So it is bearish with the RSI at 33.59 and the nearest uh, resistance would be here at 370. So if this resistance would hold, then we would see a bounce the following day. However, if it continues to move, downwards the next support level would be here at uh, let's place it at three pesos would be the next support level of meg so after meg ali okay ali had a slight recovery today but uh, although the resistance is holding I'm sorry, the support is holding at uh, 33.10 to 33.20. The prices are bearish as evidenced by our indicators, the EMA 20, 50, and 100 above the candlesticks. Then after Ali, BDO. BDO sana yan. Although the... It is a green candlestick for the one, two, three, four, fourth consecutive day. And in general, it is still sideways ang kanyang movement. So yung kanyang resistance level nasa 110 to 115. Yan, ang kanyang resistance level. And support is holding at 100. With the RSI at 52, in general, the movement of BDO is sideways and then after bdo smph okay smph also continues to move sideways the stock lost uh, 35 centavos but resistance is here at 37.20 while the support is here at 34.15 to 34.20 in general the stock is moving sideways and then URC. URC, one of my favorite stocks. Naku, bumagsak si URC. Akala ko dire-direcho na ito pataas. 
sentiment is bearish and uh, if you see the support level here there is support dito at 121 to 121.30 so it is there is a solid red candlestick for the past well today but uh, it has been red for the past one two three four five for the past week with the uh, net foreign selling at 86.45 so it ended at 125.50 pero yung range ng kanyang movement hanggang dito eh, to 141 142 so if you do range trading yung kanyang support is at 120 you can buy at that price and sell at 140 pero ano siya magandang stock naman to eh tingnan natin yung news ano investors sell urc amid lower lower tariffs oh kaya siya bumabagsak it's because of the lower tariffs for imported for pork so there is less competition since the prices of pork fell so after urc bhi wala akong news dito sa bhi can somebody comment on that pero ang lakas niya eh, oh. it has been moving up bolivard holdings no? and this is another i think another breakout with volume you know that, eh? so up net income is negative better than last year 8.56 percent up pero net loss siya. Anyway, so this is the highest, I think, in uh, for the year. Yung uh, 1030, no, 1040 is the 52-week high. So I can only plot the resistance, or uh, I'm sorry, I can only plot the support, which is here at uh, 9.32 centavos. And it has already reached highs already, you know? Yung 68, 68 na kasi yung RSI. Nag-overbought uh, na rin siya noong March 5. Overbought uli noong January 12. And some, but something's happening on the stock. I don't know what. Anyway, yan po yung resistance niyan. Pero hindi ko po masabi kung ano yung... I'm sorry. Ito po yung support. Pero yung resistance, wala po tayong data. At this point, masasabi natin resistance to based on the loan data ng March 17. So that's for Boulevard Holdings. And then another bank, BPI. Yan, BPI continues to move sideways and it flat at 83. So sideways pa rin siya. Let's place the support of BPI at MO100 at 81.60. Yun po ang support level ni BPI. Then GMA7. Wow! Bumagsak siya. Tingin ko dito, this is just dividend play. Since GMA, can I exit? Yeah, April 19 is today. So, kung bumili kayo today ng GMA, hindi na kayo kasama sa dividends. Kaya siya bumagsak. To 7.82. But it went as high as 9.40. Ito nga ba? Tama nga ba? 9.40. Let's check. Yes, this is the highest noong March 29. Pero it's just a week eh. Because of uh, good, dividend, good dividend yields of GMA7. So estimated dyan mga 15 eh. 15%. Less 20%. Mga 13% yung dividend yield net of tax one of the highest in the PSE okay so after uh, GMA7 our last stock will be APL APL opened higher and closed uh, lower kaya red candlestick although the closing price is still above our Moving averages, yung MA20 and MA50. So, in general, this is still a bullish sentiment, bullish to sideways sentiment, 
with the support at EMA 100, that's 1840 to 1850. 18 centavos, 18 and a half centavos. No? And then the resistance of uh, APL, let's place it at uh, 26 centavos. Mandarita siya. Yan, 2770. 0.2770 to 0.2780. So, 27 centavos to 28 centavos. Yan po ang ating stock market report today. Monday, April 19, 2021. Thank God it's a Monday. Ito po si Benji Chidoro. Nagpapaalala. Mag-ingat sa COVID. Marami po nakakasakit. Mga kaibigan ka po. At makakakilala, nagkaka-COVID po. Kaya doble ingat po tayo. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagsubaybay sa ating mga masugid na tagapakinig at mga subscribers. See you again on our next episode. Pagpalainawa kayo ng Diyos.